welcome to everyone here to the first session of the youth convention our first speaker for this session will be revered swami shuddhidananda ji he is adhyaksha advaita ashrama mayavati revered maharaj will be speaking in english for 25 minutes on the topic swami vivekananda's message of self confidence revered maharaj namo shri atirajaya vivekananda suraya sachit sukhasvarupaya swami neeta taharine I humble pronounce to all the revered swamis assembled here, and my heartfelt regards to all of you, dear students. <clears throat> It's really a matter of great joy for me to be addressing. this gathering of youth this is a youth convention where we have young men and women assembled here with various dreams in their eyes when we are young when we are in the prime of our youth we all carry different dreams in our hearts we have different aspirations to be fulfilled now a question comes and that question is how is that we are going to ensure that our dreams come true how is that we can make sure that we can fulfill all our aspirations in short the main question before all of us especially the young boys and girls who have assembled here the main question is how are we going to be successful in our life and when we talk about success there are several ingredients and factors which go into the making of a human life successful there are several factors involved in that among the different factors the most important point is only one and this is not an exaggeration all the points are important but there is one factor which is supremely important without which actually speaking no one can become successful in their lives and that point is self confidence now we shall look into this point now what is the self confidence what is the meaning of that and how it has got a tremendous role to play in our life in our future the way we are going to build our lives now swami vivekananda was a great proponent and teacher of this idea of self confidence in fact if you look into the literature of swami vivekananda you will see that actually speaking he has been preaching nothing but this confidence in the self faith in the self he was a great teacher of this idea of having faith in one's own self today in the social media you will find various speakers speaking about the subject of self confidence and this topic can be discussed from several perspectives and viewpoints but they fail to touch the main issue as far as this topic of self confidence is concerned here swami vivekananda's ideas they stand very much distinct and different from the so called the popular speakers in social media who speak about the subject of self confidence why in what sense is swami vivekananda's ideas different and distinct from the so called the general speakers the uniqueness of vivekananda's ideas on this subject is that swami ji's ideas on self confidence is based upon the true nature of the human being the true nature of the man 
the true nature of the woman. The true nature of the human, human being, which is presented to us by the Upanishads, which is known as Vedanta. And Swami Vivekananda was a great teacher of the central idea of the Upanishads. Now, when we talk about Swami Vivekananda's ideas on self-confidence, some of the very powerful exhortations come to my mind. Before we go into those wonderful ideas which Swami Vivekananda had kept before us on this subject, let me ask you one question. You see, when I was just sitting here a little while ago and listening to our revered elders in the inaugural session, I was looking at this picture of Swamiji here. Please look at this picture very carefully. When you look at this picture of Swami Vivekananda, the question is, what is the one thing which strikes you most? I want all of you to just pay attention to this picture, this wonderful picture of Swami Vivekananda, this majestic personality. When we look at this photograph, when we look at the face of the Swami Vivekananda, when we look into the eyes of this personality, I ask you, my dear students, what is the thing which actually strikes you most? If you ask me personally, I would say there are three things which actually radiates from this personality. And what are these three things? Number one, strength. Number two, fearlessness. Number three, the spirit of freedom and independence. I once again repeat, what do we find in this great personality called Swami Vivekananda? The most foremost thing which actually strikes and which draws our attention, that is strength, fearlessness and freedom. Now, a natural question which should come out of this is, and which would bother you also, and which would bother me also, what is the source of Vivekananda's strength? From where does he draw? the strength. What is the source of Swami Vivekananda's fearlessness? What is the source of Swami Vivekananda's spirit of independence and freedom? Is that source somewhere outside of him or is that source inside him? This is the question. The source of Swami Vivekananda's strength, the source of his fearlessness and the spirit of independence is inside Swami Vivekananda. And what is inside Swami Vivekananda, my dear friends, it is inside you, it is inside me. It is present in equal measure, not more and not less. This is a great teaching of the Vedanta that what makes Vivekananda so strong, that source is present in you as well as in me. It is present in equal measure, not less and not more. So in what sense do we become different? Why is that we don't have that kind of a strength, which Vivekananda radiates? Why? Why are we not so fearless as Vivekananda is? Why is that we are slavish? We are dependent upon so many things outside, but Vivekananda is absolutely free and independent. What makes him like that? The reason is Vivekananda has got full access to that source which makes him strong. He has established a permanent connection with what is inside him. Whereas we, you and we all, we have not yet established that connection with what is inside each one of us. That is the only difference. The more we establish this connection with that source of strength, which is inside us, you will see that we also will begin to grow stronger and stronger in life. We also will begin to manifest and, and radiate more spirit of fearlessness and we shall also begin to become more and more free and independent. This idea of self-confidence, remember, it is life transformative. The more we have the self-confidence, you will see that your life will completely transform irreversibly transform. That is the importance of this idea of self-confidence. Now, when Vivekananda preaches about this idea, 
some of the very fiery utterances which he says, which I would like to place before all of you. Swamiji says, the history of the world is a history of a few men who had faith in themselves. Again, I repeat, every sentence is electrifying. Swamiji says that the history of the world is the history of a few men who had faith in themselves. It is this faith which calls out the divinity from within. You can do anything. Swamiji says you can do anything. You fail only when you do not strive sufficiently to manifest the infinite power which is lodged inside you. Why do we fail in life? We fail in life because we fail to manifest that infinite power which is lodged inside each one of us. The moment you are gripped with self-doubt, the moment you lose faith in yourself, death comes, failure comes. That's why Swamiji says, have faith in yourself. Faith, faith, faith. That is the secret of greatness. Swamiji says, you may have faith in all the 330 millions of gods and goddesses of your religion. Mind you, what a beautiful sentence it is. We are all used to have faith in all the things external. You may have faith in all the 330 millions of gods and goddesses of your religion. And yet, if you don't have faith in your own self, you have no salvation. You cannot succeed in life without having this tremendous faith in one's own self. That's why Swamiji says, have faith in yourself, have faith in yourself and stand upon that faith, be strong, be bold. This is the great powerful exhortation coming from Swami Vivekananda. Now, we have been talking about this faith in one's own self, faith in one's own self. What is the meaning of this having faith in one's own self? To have faith in one's own self means to have faith in the infinite power which is lodged inside each one of you. Again, I repeat, faith in yourself means it is not faith in your muscular power. It is not merely the faith in your physical frame. It is a faith within something which is more deeper. Faith in that center which is a very repository of infinite power and blessedness. Now, this is that center which in each one of us. This center which is the center of infinite power this is the center within each one of us which is referred to as Atman in our great Upanishadic literature. So faith in yourself means faith in the Atman which is your true nature. My dear children, our true nature is not this physical framework. We are not limited to the small body-mind complex. This frail and fragile framework with which we are so much identified. We think that we are men, we are women. We are something more than all these limited identities. That is what the great Upanishads teach us. Upanishads tell us that you are beyond this body and mind. You are that immortal, all-powerful Atma. Now the problem is, presently, we are not aware of this Atma. This Atma is as if it is completely hidden. Ignorance, owing to ignorance, this infinite center of power is totally oblivious to our awareness. We are not aware about it. It is completely as if it is lost. As if this empire of the Atman, this all-powerful empire of the Atman is as if it is lost. Now the main goal of the human life, my dear students, remember the goal of human life is not only the question of just passing some examinations and getting a job, the goal of human life of every man and every woman is to regain this lost empire. To regain this lost empire and there are certain methods to do it. And the more and more we succeed in regaining this lost empire, you will see your life will be radically transformed. That's why our main job is to rebuild our life, remake our character based upon this Atman ideology. So faith in yourself means faith in this Atma. In fact, this word self-confidence, this English term, is very incomplete and incapable to, to convey the main idea of what this term confidence is. 
A better term is our Sanskrit term or the Indian term, which is Atma Vishwas. We all know Vishwas means faith. But Vishwas in what? Vishwas in the Atma. That is what is self-confidence. The more and more we have this Atma Vishwas, you will see what a great transformation it can bring about in our lives. Swamiji asked this question, wonderful question. He says, do you know how much energy, how many forces, how many powers are lurking behind this small physical framework of yours? Do you have any idea what is lodged inside you? We have no idea about it. Swamiji says, do not think that you are weak. Behind this frail and fragile framework of yours, Swamiji says, is the center of infinite power and infinite blessedness, which is known as the Atma. That's why we need to have faith in this Atman. And by the power of this Atman, you will see your entire life will become transformed. All your actions will become transformed. All your actions will become magnified and defined. Life itself will become divinized. This is Swami Vivekananda's message. With the touch of this Atman, your entire life is going to be completely divinized and defied and magnified. Through the actions coming from this Atman idea, you can do wonderful things in life. Nothing is unachievable for a person who has established this connection with this infinite source of power which is inside each one of us. That's why Swamiji says, what is the difference between one man and the other man? The only difference between one man and the other man is only in the difference in the degree of Atma Vishwas that person has. A person who has got more Atma Vishwas, a person who has got more faith in one's own self, he will be a more successful person. And a person who has got less faith in one's own self, he will be a lesser successful person. And a person who is doubting himself, who doesn't have faith in his own self, he is not going to succeed in life. I will present to you one instance from our great Mahabharat. We all know the story of Mahabharat. There comes the great character of Arjun. We all know the story of Mahabharat, the battle, the war between Kauravas and Pandavas. This Arjun was a great warrior of his time. In fact, the best during his time. There was hardly anybody who could compete with him. In fact, only there was one person who was slightly better than him. He was Karna. Leaving Karna aside, there was no one to defeat this brave, valorous Arjun, the Kshatriya, so powerful and so strong. And without going into the details of the story, what happened to Arjun? Arjun had come to the battlefield with firm determination to fight. But as soon as he saw his near and dear ones, what happened? My dear students, this happens to every one of us. There will come in situations in life where, we'll, where we shall be experiencing what Arjun had experienced. What happened to Arjun in that situation? When he saw the near and dear ones standing before him to wage a war, all of a sudden he was gripped by a sense of weakness. By my words, weakness. He was gripped by a sense of delusion. He was gripped by a sense of confusion. He lost the clarity of his mind. He lost the capacity to think clearly and see clearly. And in that situation, when we are weak, our limbs begin to tremble. Our mouth becomes dried up. And then finally, Arjun, leaving his bow and arrow down, he sits down, he sinks into the chariot, and he tells to Krishna, Oh Lord Krishna, I am not going to fight. Just imagine the most powerful soldier of that time coming to this pathetic plight. Why? Weakness. Lack of faith in one's own self. Suffering from an amnesia about one's own true nature. This was Arjun's situation and this is also your situation and my situation. There will come many such situations in life which will invite this kind of a psychological and physiological reactions in us. Now what is the medicine to this? That medicine which Sri Krishna gave, wonderful, two verses. Swamiji says, if you have understood the spirit of these two verses, you have understood the whole of Bhagavad Gita. What did Krishna say there? Wonderful. 
electrifying, literally it's an electric shock given to Arjun and that is the shock which we all need. And Swami Vivekananda was a great admirer of this idea. Krishna said, beautiful two verses, Kutatsva Kashmaramita, Vishame Samupasthita, Anarya Jushtam, Asvaragyam, Akirti Karam Arjuna, Klaibyam Masmagama Partha, Naita Dvayupapadyate, Shodram, Ridaya Daurabalyam, Tyatva Uttashtha Parantapa. Just see what it says. He says, O oh Arjun, from where has this delusion and weakness gripped you in this critical situation? In this critical situation, from where has this delusion come into your mind? He says, Vaibhyam Masmagamad Partha, do not yield to unmanliness. Look at the words. He says, do not behave like a eunuch. You literally translate that word, Klaibhyam, Kliba. Kliba means eunuch. Do not behave like a eunuch. Stand up on your feet. Give up your faint-heartedness and fight the battle. Swamiji says, if you understand the spirit of these two verses, you have understood the whole of Bhagavad Gita. And what follows? Krishna then gives to Arjuna the supreme teaching of this Atman, 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 the true nature of every man and true nature of every woman. The more this awareness of this Atman is awakened, you see how it brings about a radical transformation in the personality. And that is what that is what precisely happened with Arjuna. <coughs> Towards the end of the Gita, we find after having given this all this wonderful instruction, Arjun towards the end says, Nashto Moha, Smritir Lantha, Dvat Prasada Maya Chuta, Stitosme, Gata Sandeha, Karish Ye Vachanam Tava. He says, All my doubts have vanished. I have regained my memory about who I am, and now I am ready to wage this war. This is the spirit actually we all need in life. See, you are all youngsters here, young men and women. You have a long way to go. Life was never a cakewalk. It is not a cakewalk and it is never going to be a cakewalk. Take it. You have to face. At every step you will see that you will be facing an adamantine wall of opposition. How are you going to face the situation? Every time situation is not going to be favorable. Situations may be favorable, most of the time you will find it is not in your favor. And yet you will have to face this brute. From where are you going to draw the strength to face this life? That strength is not going to come from somewhere outside. That is what Vivekananda preaches this great idea of Atma Vishwas. Self-faith, self-faith. The more you have this faith in yourself, you see what radical transformation can come in your life and personality. As I said before, this idea of self-faith and self-confidence is life transformative. It radically and irreversibly transforms the human character and personality and it gives you inevitable strength to face the challenges and ups and downs of life. That's why Swamiji says, man, man, when you have this kind of strength which is coming from the Atman, Swamiji says, what we want is strong, vigorous, bold man. Men who believe in themselves, men who are strong, and from where is this strength going to come? It is going to come from this Atma. I'll just read out a wonderful quote. Swamiji says, Men, men, these are wanted. Everything else will be ready, but strong and vigorous men. Sincere to the backbone, we want such strong men. A hundred such, and the world becomes revolutionized. For centuries, people have been taught theories of degradation. How true it is. For the last thousand years, we Indians have been told that you are nobody, you are nobody, you are nobody, and we have become nobodies. Swamiji says that now it is time for everyone to listen to this idea of the Atman. Because it is from this idea of the Atman that strength is going to come. And what India today needs is this great idea of strength. We want young, strong, vigorous, bold, young men and women with strength in them, muscles of iron, nerves of steel. This is what Swami Vivekananda's ideas of strength was. And opposite to this is the idea of weakness. This weakness is the only thing which Swamiji says is sin. If at all there is any sin in this life, weakness is the only sin. It is weakness which makes us miserable in life. 
It is weakness which is the cause of all suffering in human life. It is weakness which makes us commit crimes. It is weakness which makes us speak lie. It is weakness which makes us really miserable in life. And what is the solution for this weakness? The only solution for this weakness is strength which comes from this great center of the Atma. That's why Swami Vivekananda's very powerful exhortation, which is so dear to most of us, Swamiji says in a very poetic manner, he says, that's why, what is that we are supposed to do? Teach yourself. Teach everyone his real nature. Call upon the sleeping soul and see how it awakes. What a beautiful idea. Swamiji says, teach yourself. What are you going to teach yourself? Teach yourself about the Atman. Teach everyone about the Atman. Call upon the sleeping soul and see how it evicts. Power will come, glory will come, goodness will come, purity will come. Everything that is excellent will come when the sleeping soul is roused to self-conscious activity. These are some of the very powerful exhortations given by Swami Vivekananda so that we young men and women of this country, we can take our life ahead. My dear students, one more last point and I will wind up my talk. Today, India is standing at the threshold of becoming a great power globally. We all know this. In 1947, what was the condition of India? From that absolutely a poor and pathetic state, today India is the fifth largest economy in the world. And in the next decade, India is going to become the third largest economy in the world in the matter of few more years. And it is predicted that by, 19, by 2047, when we shall be celebrating the centenary of India's independence, India will be at par with the most powerful nations in the world. This Swami Vivekananda had predicted 125 years back and his whole hope won was on the young generation. So you all have a great onus, great responsibility. In the coming decades, you have to play a great role. And to play this great role, to execute your plans, to execute your ideas, you need strength. And that strength, my dear friends, can come from this Atman and Atman alone. So we need to remake our life. We need to rebuild our character based upon this Atman idea. And we have to take this point seriously. Thank you so much. We offer our humble pranams to revered Maharaj for his wonderful deliberation on Swami Vivekananda's message of self-confidence or Atma Shraddha.